नमस्ते मिस्टर राजू गुड मॉर्निंग मैम नमस्ते मैम हाउ आर यू मैम वेरी फाइन ओके मैम गॉट अ वेरी नाइस बैकग्राउंड मैम दिस इज द बेनिफिट ऑफ मैम डिजिटल डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म्स इवन दो आई एम सिटिंग इन डिफरेंट बैकग्राउंड आई कैन स्टिल मैनिपुलेट द थिंग्स ओके मैम विथ योर ड्यू परमिशन मैम आई थिंक वी कैन स्टार्ट यस सो गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन नमस्कार सो वेलकम्स टू टुडे वेबिनार ऑन थंडर स्ट्रॉम एंड लाइटिंग दैट इज ज्वाइंटली ऑर्गेनाइज्ड बाय नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट इन कोलैबोरेशन विथ इंडिया मेट्रोलॉजिकल डिपार्टमेंट मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ आर्ट एंड साइंस सो दिस इज आवर सेकंड वेबिनार ऑफ दिस वेबिनार सीरीज अर्ली वार्निंग अर्ली एक्शन सो आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ यू हैव ऑलरेडी नोन दैट थंडर स्ट्रॉम लाइटिंग आर वेरी हैजार्डियस एंड दे कैन कॉज रिस्क टू लाइफ एंड public property also they are they are like potentially hazardous for uh, aviation sector also as well as in addition to the uh, the transport the power the communication and other socio economic sectors so lightning strike the like there are uh, some uh, numbers that it strike more than 50 to 100 times per second but uh, if if you have seen that uh, recently that the uh, lightning uh, and also according to one of the imd report that lightning that has doubled since 2004 and uh, between 1995 and 2014 and we saw a jump of nearly 30 to 40% in lightning incident in india and also the number of death has also increased significantly uh, between the 1990s if you compare it with uh, today's uh, scenario so keeping into the account the devastation caused by the uh, severe thunderstorm causing uh, like during uh, like pre monsoon uh, months and also of the like particularly this uh, an over a different period of india also and particularly the northern and northwestern region ministry of arts science like they are taking a, like a, took a time targeted uh, development working under the chairmanship of uh, uh, secretary mos where a working group has been formed to develop the tools of predicting thunderstorm occurring as well as like lightning flash and, uh, and other things heavy rain so under the, this new initiative scientists uh, are working uh, together in coordination and in a very holistic way for for the now casting so uh, based on this the aim of this webinar is to sensitize the participants regarding assessment forecasting preparedness mitigation of thunderstorm and lightning uh, and also to understand the adverse effect of thunderstorm and lightning technical knowledge and available resources for timely resource and uh, recovery also and in this webinar we will also try to uh, understand the scientific and engineering uh, endeavors aim to addressing the critical gaps in knowledge so for that uh, we have with us uh, dr soma sen roy ji who is the scientist at imd and um, associated with uh, indian india meteorological department and she has been working very closely with thunderstorm and lightning for several years and we are uh, looking forward to get a very insight in this topic and ma'am has been very generous enough to join us for several programs so welcome ma'am once again and uh, over to you ma'am the floor is yours ma'am we will be happy no, to hear sure. uh, may i share my content uh, yes ma'am please ma'am i have already assigned you the rights is it in uh, presentation mode yes ma'am but uh, there is a small window that is open in front of your uh, ma'am if you can drag it down side ma'am that will be yes ma'am is, yep. is this yes, okay ma yes ma'am yes ma'am sorry sir okay and this also we can drag okay. yes ma'am fine perfect is this okay Great. This is much better. Okay. Uh, so, namaskar again, and uh, thank you for permitting to speak on a very uh, appropriate subject, uh, because this is uh, currently going on uh, every day. You must be seeing or reading about thunderstorms and uh, their effect all over the country, and uh, we need to talk about it. Only if you talk about it, uh, my knowledge gaps. Uh, 
and your knowledge gaps can complement and maybe we can reach a stage where uh, we can reduce this figure that uh, Mr. Thapa was just speaking about of the order of 2,500 to 3,000 uh, people dying every year to zero. So that is the target of uh, this presentation. And uh, please uh, ask me questions regarding whatever I'm speaking of. If I can, I'll answer immediately. If not, I'll try to I'll take your email and answer you back later. Uh, Uh, you can click on the screen, ma'am, once, then. You know. oh, 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 sorry. Then I think it's okay. Okay. Uh, so I started with a very uh, nice animation thing. It's not something I've generated, but picked up from the web. Uh, so the picture to the left is a thunderstorm cloud, uh, something that you see from the ground standing here. You see a big cauliflower shaped cloud. So what happens inside the cloud really is that uh, there are updrafts and downdrafts. That is, uh, the moist air from the from below rises and uh, wet air, wet air rather carrying large water droplets uh, falls downwards and finally comes down as rain. Now, in the process, uh, when the cloud is quite deep, deep means uh, when it has crossed the, as you know, the atmosphere gets colder as we go up from the ground. So once it is crossed zero degrees Celsius, uh, ice particles start to form. So very small ice particles are known as broccoli, uh, less than 0.5 millimeter, and bigger ice particles are there. So when there is this huge movement within the cloud, means a lot of particles going up, some coming down. It's like a marketplace inside the cloud. And uh, what happens with the ice, ice particles is something uh, like what happens uh, if you rub your hands together and try to touch a piece of paper. Uh, it, it gets charged. So only on a, on a much larger scale than just your hands. So some of the ice particles uh, lose an electron from, due to the friction and others gain it. So in net effect, what happens is uh, the ones that lose an electron become positively charged uh, ice particles, ice, uh, ice uh, uh, particles, and the ones which are uh, gaining an electron will become negatively charged. So what happens is gradually during this entire process of going up, coming down, regions form in a cloud where uh, the positive charge accumulates, positively charged ice particles accumulate, and negatively charged ice particles accumulate at other places. So if you see the, uh, uh, this is a general uh, picture from uh, National Severe Storms Laboratory thing. It's not my picture, but this is exactly what happens in a cloud. So once it becomes charged, uh, it looks for a path to discharge. So this charge, a positive and negative charge, they can discharge within the cloud. That means this negative charge will discharge with respect to this positive charge. That will create a create a uh, lightning arc, a electric arc discharge, so, which is called a intra-cloud or inter-cloud lightning. But the ground is considered infinite uh, infinite neutral condition. So both positive and negative charges can also discharge with respect to the ground. And that is what we know as cloud to ground lightning. So when it is cloud to cloud red lightning, we are not affected by it at all. A lot of this happens throughout the world at every second. This is not of interest to us. What is it of interest is the cloud to ground lightning. Mostly this is negative charge being discharged with respect to the ground, but you also get positive charge if the cloud height is not much. Positive charge also gets discharged with respect to the ground. So cloud to cloud lightning inside the cloud and cloud to ground lightning, which is cloud to the ground. Now cloud to ground lightning is on an annual scale. It is much higher in the tropics than in the extratropics. This is also a scientific finding, which is uh, seen in various studies. So this is a very beautiful animation if you see exactly how lightning happens. 
So if you see the uh, the upper, uh, sorry, I will yeah. So if you see that uh, the the negative charge or the positive charge generally it is shown as negative charge, but it can also be the opposite thing. So the charge looks for a way to neutralize that. I wish I could show stop uh, this uh, this thing on the top because it is it is yeah okay. So the negative charge it looks for a path to discharge with respect to the ground. Now the atmosphere the air is uh, insulated, but if the charge accumulation accumulation is too much inside the cloud, then it looks for the the path is it can break through that insulation and it is like a capacitor breakdown and that charge can reach the ground. How does it reach the ground? Because of this negative, uh, suppose it is negative charge is trying to find a path to the ground. It causes all tall objects on the ground to you know to the the reverse charge gets accumulated at the top of this uh, top of this uh, tall objects on the ground. So this negative charge, for example, coming from the top, whether there is negative or positive, when it is coming from the cloud, it's called a stepped ladder. And from the bottom, whatever that positive charge or the opposite opposite charged, uh, you know, the hand that is reaching up, that is called a streamer channel. That is what finds the final path. That means the the charge comes find and does a handshake with this. Uh, opposite charge and the lightning finds a path to the ground. The actual diameter of lightning channel current, it is something like an electric arc, nothing more than that. It is only about one to two inches, but it is surrounded by a region of charged particles. So that 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 is what gives you that flash of light that you see. When this Discharge happens, it heats the air around it and it heats it to the amount of 30,000 degrees uh, Celsius. So, this immense heating causes the air to expand like a bomb, and that creates a shock wave, which is the thunder. So, lightning and thunder are related to each other. Uh, there, in fact, uh, if there is lightning, there is thunder, only it may be far enough, too far away for you to hear. but Nevertheless, there is always thunder associated with lightning. Lightning is not just a harmful thing. If you look at lightning, it does something very useful for the atmosphere. Lightning uh, strikes help dissolve unusable nitrogen in water. So, uh, you know, nitrogen does not dissolve in water. So, generally, rainfall happens after the lightning. So, like uh, the nitrogen is combined with oxygen during the process of lightning in this extreme heated conditions, like nitrogen ions are created which combine with oxygen and create nitric oxide or nitrogen dioxide. And that basically dissolves in water and comes down as the natural fertilizer for plants. The cloud to cloud lightning also produces ozone. Uh, which is a vital gas for the atmosphere. That is the main way in which ozone is produced and that prevents the ultraviolet sunlight to reach the earth. So lightning is not harmful. It is only that the cloud to ground lightning is harmful and needs to be protected against. So if you see India, uh, we will take up the major issues of the day, of what we are seeing in the newspapers currently. Generally, the what is needed for a cloud to form, you need high low level temperatures, you need a lot of moisture. Now, in, in over India, you are all, uh, I believe most of our participants are Indian. So you know that from March to September, generally the soil is, the earth is pretty hot, warm enough for clouds to form. So what is what controls cloud lifetime and cloud growth? Is basically availability of moisture. Now, when you take our pre monsoon season, which is say March to May, you all know clouds are very short lived. I mean, you just have most of the Indian region, except the coast, coastal regions, uh, the clouds form and die down maybe within half an hour or within an hour. Hardly enough time for charging, discharging this entire process to be sufficiently long. And you know, the buildup does not happen. 
what happens when monsoon is onset is over a dry hot region you must be if you are you've all faced this thing just in the last within the last one month so your memories are quite fresh about this your uh, the hot dry land on which moist winds flow in and that creates conditions for long lived clouds with low enough cloud top and cloud to ground lightning becomes a major problem I'm talking of monsoon onset as a general thing that during monsoon onset, this kind of conditions happen. But for our coastal regions, even non monsoon clouds, like for example, let us take Andhra, Orisha, these regions, you also get like this cloud. This is not a monsoon, this is not a monsoon system cloud, but nevertheless, even in these clouds, when it is close to the cloud coast, uh, enough moisture is available, the clouds are long lived and cloud to ground lightning is small. Does it mean that it is only during May and June, June that uh, uh, June and July, rather when the monsoon, when this cloud to ground lightning is most frequent? No, even August is very frequent, uh, cloud to ground lightning, especially from break to active conditions. You know, when there has not been any rain for a long time, we go to something like May like conditions, it is hot and sultry, but no rain. And then when rains suddenly come, even in those clouds, you get a lot of cloud to ground lightning. And the second way in which cloud to ground lightning is most frequent is in coastal thunderstorms. So this is a picture of cloud to ground lightning of uh, total lightning versus uh, thunderstorm. Like I said, both are related to each other. So if you see cloud to uh, sorry, this uh, lightning frequency is highest where the thunderstorm frequency is highest. This is uh, January, February. This is March, April, May and June to August and September to November. This is December to February. So this indicates that wherever there is a high of lightning, there is a corresponding high in thunderstorm. This is important. Why is it important? If we want to find uh, the annual climatology of lightning, uh, climatology is not decided on one year, but 30 to 40 years data is required. Our observations of lightning are comparatively recent. So that has to be supplemented by some long-term observations. And we find that thunderstorm observations from Indian observatories, surface observatories, have a long data set. Using that, we see that the annual climatology is what we have just talked about. That is the South Peninsula is a high lightning prone region, high thunderstorm prone region, East and Northeast India, highly thunderstorm prone region and Northwest India, this uh, Jammu region especially, highly thunderstorm prone region. This region that is West India and uh, extending up to South, up to Mumbai, etc. these regions are comparatively less lightning prone. You see these little red dots, uh, these are our radar locations, which is very necessary for, for studying and now casting, which I will come to later. If you see thunderstorm frequency, like I told you, March to October, September, it is high frequency of thunderstorms. I've shown pictures of four years, but again, I'm telling you, Thunderstorm days, this is the frequency of thunderstorm days. It's not reflecting on like thunderstorm lifetime. So lifetime is more during June to Ma, Ma, May to August, May, June, July, August, when lightning is more frequent. If we take the trend of thunderstorm days over India, we find that say this particular block, which is uh, which is the main region for monsoon activity, we find that this region A, here the there has been a global hiatus in or a decreasing trend, this uh, orange line till 1993-94, after which there has been a gradually increasing trend in thunderstorm days. Northeast India also is showing an increasing trend in thunderstorm days, whereas West India, there is no trend per se. If we see lightning itself, the period is shorter. This is 69 to 2015. From 1996 to 
13 if you see then uh, the same trend like i showed you here uh, 1995 or 96 to 2019 uh, 2015 there has been a increasing trend the same thing is seen here 1996 to 2013 there is a increasing trend in lightning activity these are this is the maxima annual maxima and this is showing the increasing trend over these maxima regions so this indicates that thunderstorm days as well as lightning frequency is increasing in the regions which are most prone to lightning if you see the frequency of deaths due to lightning there is a you will note that the same region that i talked of where there is a increasing trend in lightning flashes is also the region where lightning deaths is increasing so population is increasing lifestyle is changing that people are going out and old knowledge is not being transmitted down and lightning deaths are increasing hence seminars like this when we talk about how to decrease this kind of deaths from 3000 to zero that is our target and we need your help for that if you see the imd or the ministry of earth sciences method for thunderstorm forecasting uh, this is a four step process we have first with the pre-season preparedness uh, like today's seminar at our uh, station level i'll talk about what we do then there is a one to five day forecast three hourly location specific now cast and 30 to 40 minute warning of lightning occurrence so we are gradually going if you see we are giving different uh, levels of preparedness that how should one handle the the preparedness in in case of such a severe weather when we talk of pre-season preparedness it is not the ministry of earth sciences work alone that means we are only the people we are the people who are producing the warnings or the forecasts but what you see on the ground is a lot of effort going on from the disaster management agencies seminars like this which has been organized by nidm the the coordination between the ministry of communication telecommunications ministry of uh, um, uh, the, the human resource development gram panchayat everything and with the ndm and the ndm has produced a very nice uh, white paper on the uh, action plan for managing uh, uh, and prevention, preventing thunderstorm, re lightning related uh, and strong winds related casualties and damages. So it clearly spells out the roles of different divisions, departments in this, in handling such a major emergency. From our end, what we do is we have state level interaction meetings with disaster managers and uh, media people and district authorities. This is not just with respect to lightning, but before every severe weather season, our seasons are such that lightning, like I told you, does not happen throughout the year. It happens only during a specific period of the year. Similarly, flash floods, similarly, heat waves. Nobody is interested in heat wave related warnings in the month of October. They feel four months is, we still have six months left before we need to worry about that problem. Tell us about what to, how to handle a cold wave. So we do this kind of pre-season exercise in which lightning is an important component to be discussed. We, then the, this is a meeting in our uh, Jharkhand office where the media people, the state disaster management authorities, district collectorates, they're told how to react when a warning goes. So when we issue a warning, the war, as I told you, IMD is not doing everything. A lot of work depends on the innovativeness, on the initiative of the state level authorities, of the national level authorities, how to take action on the basis of the warnings. If any action is taking place on the ground, one should thank, the, thank all the people down the chain, down to the village level workers, apad mitras in some states, who take action, teachers who educate students about how to take action if there is such a event when you come to one to five day scale which is the medium range scale of warnings this is happening from delhi and also from the meteorological centers 
and then we come this comes from five days to 48 hours to three hours and this three hourly scale as well as this uh, short range forecast we give to various locations to various stakeholders that can be through the IMD website through media defense VIP movements state and national disaster managers Grameen Krishi Mosam Seva project GKMS uh, for farmers to take action suppose there is aid expected high winds expected what to do power sector then uh, for hydroelectric projects major hydroelectric projects cultural events like the Kumbh Mela games uh, any major game even that is being held IPL matches uh, aviation sector airport met offices everybody is given these warnings now in this context I might I'll, I'll tell you something more uh, unlike many other kinds of severe weather where there is a lot more time for warning for example tropical cyclones four to five day scale is necessary is available for taking action in this case you only have maybe around one hour or 30 minutes to take action so what i just talked to you about the pre-season exercise or now cast that means large i mean even without any warning reaching you you taking action or now cast scale that is 30 to 40 minutes in advance this becomes extremely important in the context of thunderstorms and lightning so that is why we talk specifically on now casts we specifically talk on pre-season exercise so this is just a picture to show you what kind of forecast for example we give uh, this is suppose we are giving an orange warning this round things white colored indicates lightning warnings so wherever there is orange lightning warnings we are expecting strong uh, cloud to ground lightning it will be in our text message also this is giving that no don't worry about uh, whatever is happening your lightning will happen mostly over north rajasthan and mp so this is our actual this is valid for 24 hours this is one to five day scale we'll get this kind of warning for different kinds of weather even phenomena in the same map this is thunderstorm more detailed what kind of thunderstorms we are expecting whether there is lightning expected only or whether there is falls gusty winds expected and whether there is hail and lightning expected so once we come to the nowcast scale so that is coming in terms of three hours so that will give you information about okay now your district is getting lightning or district is getting thunderstorms what action to take that is coming in our website this is our verification statistics we are we produce these results every year this year's results are being generated now so this is our verification our verification our results are improving but this is not the end of the story i am talk, talking only of the forecast please remember one of the first pictures i showed you there are still 3000 people dying we are not this is not getting translated on the ground that is the problem so if you see uh, i will not go into this but this is our when i talked of nowcast and nowcast is station level nowcast as well as uh, all districts of india so for this districts of india as well as station level nowcast this kind of warnings go and there are around 21 categories of warnings from where our forecasters at meteorological centers every three hours they will update and they will put the warning on the Indian map. Other than this, if severe weather is expected, then through all these medium, uh, through these media, that is public address systems, sirens, public displays, TV, radio broadcast, internet, radios, we produce this kind of impact based warnings and animation. So, this warning, these warnings then are in local language that only in case of severe weather this kind of warnings are transmitted who is it transmitted to it is transmitted to disaster managers and state disaster management authorities have their own dissemination mechanisms through which this message these messages are transmitted why i'm highlighting repeatedly is that there is a entire coordination of all government machinery various NGOs to 
finally try to bring this information at least to some extent amongst the people who are actually being affected. So we have a Mossam app, Make Do app, there is auto notification and there is a Damini app which is I talked to you about uh, three hourly. This is giving you three hour warnings up to here is three hours. 30 minute warning you get through these two apps through which you get to know around you whether there is lightning probability, whether you need to take action. One thing is saying an entire district is going to get lightning. Another thing is to know, okay, you are going to get lightning in your village. So for that, these two apps are extremely good. Rain alarm app and the Dominia app. So I will not go into a statistics for verification because uh, again, our target is in this meeting is to see to it that the message gets transmitted that these warnings need to be acted upon. So what we have to put it in a nutshell is our operational severe weather forecasts in India Meteorological Department. Into that is coming in observations, model products, visualization tools, pre-season exercise, coordination that goes on throughout the year. Something known as crowdsourcing. We need your information about damages happening. One of the major problems with India is that we really do not, this penetration of technology has been a very decent phenomenon. There is no, uh, we do not have yet a nationalized database, long period database to give us information about in real time about uh, damages happening in association with weather events. So crowdsourcing I will talk to you about and uh, I put in a slide of that and dissemination. This is where we really need your help uh, to disseminate our forecasts, to act upon our forecasts. So NGOs, state and central government authorities, various stakeholders, they take up the responsibility of dissemination of our warnings. So this is the crowdsourcing I was talking to you about. I have listed it in this. I will share the presentation with uh, Mr. Thapa. So this is a link. It's a very easy link. Please go in and give in your warnings. If what has happened in your location, we want to know. In your district, in your location, there is a location uh, wants to know your location. Please give your location so that helps us pinpoint which part of a district is getting this particular event. If you expect customized warnings, amber, uh, sorry, green, no warning, yellow, be informed, orange, uh, okay, keep, uh, be prepared, and red, take action. If this kind of warnings we have to issue in a very uh, in a very uh, specific fashion, we need this information from you. So we expect your help in implementing this. Just as an example, uh, you see crowdsourcing reports gave us so much information about thunderstorms, hailstorms that happened over India. Though from our observatories, we just had two reports. So there we need your help a lot. Please help us. We are planning to start severe weather nowcasts for power, health, transport, and urban sector on GIS platform. So that if you're on a highway, you want to know in the next two kilometers whether you're expecting thunderstorms, whether you're expecting or your train will be delayed because there are thunderstorms on the way, dust storms on the way over Rajasthan, or there is uh, uh, any other kind of severe rains happening on the way. So then all that information will come to you. Then common alert protocol based now cast. You don't have to load anything. All those apps I showed you can be thrown away. You'll be informed through a common alert protocol, which will override all uh, mobile service providers and just the warning will come. We are implementing it and NDMA has taken the lead in this. It will shortly come. I will try to end this lecture with a, a very uh, relevant thing. Why are we talking so much about lightning? Uh, why, why, what is the big thing that it does? So we are basically going back in a loop to the first few slides, uh, but this is the whole theme of this talk. So I want you to focus not just on the mechanism that IMD uses to issue the warnings, but also the reason why you should act upon the warnings. So the first thing is a 
strict strike. Please note, I told you that any object uh, can function as a streamer. You remember the stepped leader and uh, streamer. So the streamer current flows through a human being, standing human being, or a tree, and or from a standing human being, and that forms the channel for the lightning to come to the ground. So that is what you need to be aware of. Side flash or side splash. This is something that uh, you must have seen recently pictures. Uh, it was a viral video. If you've not, please check it on the mobile. Uh, your uh, good girl, people standing under a tree or standing under, or even uh, you see the Amber Fort uh, instance. What really happened? The lightning did strike a tall object, which is the treetop or uh, Amber fort, maybe put the projections from the top of the fort. But then when it, when it comes to close to the ground, you serve as an alternate channel for the lightning flash to reach the ground. So this is again a way in which people die. You must be aware of this happening. Then third is ground current. Now, this is something you say, I was not standing under the tree, or rather your ghost says if you're dead already, I was not standing under the tree. I was not, uh, I was minding my own business in the sides. Then why does lightning strike? Because oftentimes it might strike one point, and this is especially true in the case of our farmers standing in paddy fields uh, during paddy transplantation, or if the soil is very uh, iron rich, so to say, it's a very conducting soil. So the lightning basically conducts through the water, which is the ionized water, or through the uh, the, the very metal-rich rich so topsoil to you, and it basically affects you. So this is the third way in which people are affected. Fourth is streamer. I talked to you about lightning finding the path through the tallest thing, but if there is a lot of lightning in the atmosphere, you remember uh, that slide in which not the streamers were not just happening from the tallest object, but from all standing objects. So you yourself are producing a streamer, even though that you're not directly getting a lightning strike. So the fifth one, fourth, third and fourth are, sorry, third and fourth are almost the same, ground current and conduction. So don't, uh, if you don't touch these iron, sometimes the, you know, there are iron, um, Railings, they are a great conductors for lightning. Having said this, all our actions are directly relevant to this. But let us see how lightning really hurts a person before we go into action to be taken. It basically travels through a contact point through the nervous or cardiovascular system. It basically transfers the ions, potassium and sodium ions. I'm not a doctor, but that is what I've been given to understand. And it destroys the ionization of the body and it causes a shock reaction. The bigger the body, human, animal, more space the lightning has to travel inside the body and more damage it creates. So the third thing is, most common way people get injured by lightning is through the ground currents. I showed you this picture that lightning is striking. It is not that the lightning is coming from the top. It is lightning once it has found a path. The discharges are with respect to the ground. The ground, the, the current travels from the ground upwards and neutralizes the charge. So once it is traveling through one of the legs of the human being, it travels to the heart and comes down. So this is necessary to understand about how to uh, take precautions. Fourth is cardiac arrest, causing death, severe burns, permanent brain damage, memory loss and personality change. So from this flows the actions to be taken. First of all, we have, you know, very catchy words. When thunder roars, go indoors. Please do not be a hero. Go indoors. Go inside a Pakka location. 
This is not the time to stand outside and take pictures. People who died at the Amir Fort were tourists who were tired of sitting inside the house due to the heat, took advantage of the light rains and went outside. Second thing is, remember the 3030 lightning safety rule. When you hear, when you see a lightning flash, it in light, the, the light travels much faster than the sound. So if you can hear the sound within 30 seconds, 30, within the 30 seconds before you can count 30, if you can hear the thunder, it means that the flash has taken place very close to you. Without any Damini app, without anything, you should immediately go indoors. Please go indoors into a pakka structure. If you are caught outside, this can happen, then get out, get off elevated areas such as cliff tops, hill tops, mountain ridges, isolated trees. Get away from them. Immediately get out and away from ponds, wet paddy fields, lakes, swimming pools. Get out. Please don't try boating inside the, in the rains uh, when there is lightning happening. Your the the water body is a very good conductor for lightning. This is a major reason why farmers in wet paddy fields it strikes one paddy field, 40 farmers transplanting paddy in that field die. If you remember the region which shows the maximum casualty, please remember Odisha, West Bengal, Bihar, Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh. These are the regions where farmers are. Uh, uh, why only these regions? The, uh, but these are the regions where paddy transplantation takes place. Chhattisgarh, uh, paddy transplantation takes place once the monsoon starts. And not just paddy, farmers try to take advantage of the rain and they're out in the fields. So direct strikes also harm them. If you, are not, if you don't have any shelter, please go into a lightning crouch. I will show a picture of that. And uh, keep away from utility lines and objects that conduct electricity. I told you conduction electricity, you know, railings or uh, don't lean on railings. Stay away from them. They are very good conductors for electricity. You don't, you lightning may strike maybe 50 meter, 100 meter from you, but the, it can be conducted through the light, through the uh, wires to you. So this is a typical lightning crouch. Uh, this I picked up from the web. But I told you the streamer currents basically flow through you. So if it is flowing through, it will not travel to your heart. It will, if the two keels are joined, this is the, in Hindi we call it the murga pose or the upru pose. I mean, you know, in school, children used to be punished like this. But this is a very good pose for saving yourself from lightning. Then the lightning flash will move through one foot, come down to the other. So this is the right way in which lightning will not harm you and it will simply flow through one leg, one uh, uh, foot into the other foot. So this is the best pose to take if you are in the open ground. If you're indoors, then first of all, please equip the whole house with surge protectors. This is a one-time investment and lightning, I have said it is increasing. If you're building a house, if you're repairing your house, Please see to the surge protectors. Do not try to save money on that. It is a necessary expenditure. If you are inside, close windows and doors. I told you, lightning can jump. You know, close uh, by if there is a metal thing, it can jump through. So close the windows and doors and wait inside. Unplug electrical and electronic appliances. I'm pretty sure you all have stories of your TV burnt, radio burn or mixy burn or geyser burn because it was put plugged into the electric mains and the lightning flash happened and simply burned through the entire equipment. Do not take bath or shower. That is necessary because, you know, the elect the I told you water is ionized water. Pure water is not a conductor, but all water has some amount of dissolved material that makes it a ionic conductor. So that water through the plumbing lines becomes a source of conduction of electricity. So avoid running water. Do not lie on concrete floors and do not lean on concrete walls. The bigger the body, uh, the concrete floor, I told you because I told you if the 
if the if it is conducting through the ground then lightning can strike you even if you're inside and if you think you're safe so that is not the right thing to do if you even if you're inside if you're interested in lightning warning videos please go to this ndma site there are a lot of very beautiful uh, videos uh, show it to people let children see it Be, uh, become aware of what action to take and uh, go to our mosam website uh, please for the latest weather information our our initiative is from 5 days to 40 minutes all scales the warning should go if you have an android mobile download damini app it is a good app to use to get warning thank you i think uh, that is all i can take questions and uh, thank you again thank you very much ma'am uh, for your wonderful presentation and uh, talking about the thunderstorm and lightning and also highlighting the basics of thunderstorm and lightning right from monitoring and initiatives taken from mois in early warning and prediction and also explaining us about the short range forecasting the medium range forecasting and now casting of the thunderstorm and lightning and uh, like you said ma'am which is rightly you rightly hi highlighted that data sharing concept point that data sharing it will definitely it will encourage more connection and collaboration between researchers also which can result in important new findings within this yes. particularly this very important field yes. and uh, uh, in in my personal view ma'am uh, it will also help like in a time where we need to reduce our monetary investment for science and research so this yes. data sharing i think ma'am it will also be more efficient because it will allow some researcher to share resources Yes. rather than investing in more equipments which is already there with some other institutions yes. so that will yes ma'am that will be very much essential and also ma'am you have very nicely nice rightly mentioned about the sensitizations uh, like of the teachers of the apda mitra and the community as a whole which which can like immensely help in minimizing the harmful effect of the thunderstorm uh, and on particularly on the communities and uh, public awareness and education like you said it will help us to improve our uh, disaster resilience of the masses so thank you very much ma'am for wonderful uh, uh, presentation ma'am so ma'am i will uh, there are several question ma'am i will raise those question one by one to you ma'am please uh, yes ma'am the first question is from ma'am uh, kundu the question is ma'am sir during monsoon uh, rain occurs with or without thunder and lightning so how do you separate out a thunderstorm event from a non thunderstorm event during the month of particularly this june july august and september when there is a record of like ground reaching precipitation okay um very nice question and uh, mr kundu is it kundu yes ma'am yes ma okay uh, mr kundu has uh, said a very uh, good good it is a very good uh, question uh i will uh, how do i put it okay uh, what happens is uh, any thunderstorm any uh, weather that happens is of is due to uh, clouds definitely as you see uh, clouds are basically of two types uh, one is you know uh, the convective cloud the loud sound and a uh, uh, lot of big droplets it's especially if you have uh, seen if you have it uh, very seen it in great detail the kind of weather that is happening over your location uh, the initial rain after maybe in pre monsoon season a march to any any time after a long dry spell when you get the rain the first droplets that come in big droplets lot of thunder strong winds that is the period when lightning strikes but afterwards you will see that lightning flashes cease even if you even within the same event lightning flashes cease we call it at that time stratiform rainfall when there is no lightning then you will see slow rain light rain will continue falling over your location i mean it is constantly falling so that kind of cloud does not give lightning generally what happens is you can think of it something like an uh, umbrella uh, or 
yeah, something like multiple umbrellas sitting around so that locations where there is that, uh, you know, that umbrella uh, umbrella stand or a mushroom, uh, like a better idea is a mushroom, the mushroom stem, that stem region, when it is passing over your region, that will be the time when you get those loud thunder and uh, uh, cloud to ground lighting, etc. And that surrounding that, that uh, you know, that uh, roof of the mushroom, you would say that outer regions, those are light rains, but there is no thunder associated with them. So that initial phase is what you need to be worried about. The problem is this, that this initial phase is sometimes continued. If, if there is, like it happened over North India this year, if there is a strong dry winds from the west and this kind of moist winds are meeting somewhere, say, over Bihar, UP, Jharkhand, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, repeatedly over the days, that if the boundary is broken and that light stratiform kind of clouding is happening, uh, that will not give lightning. But if it is happening, if, if that junction area between the dry and the moist is the region where you get a lot of lightning. So multiple days of lightning continue, cloud, cloud to ground lightning, strong cloud to ground lightning will continue for multiple days over a region where this kind of boundary exists. If the boundary is destroyed, if like you see, if you're over Delhi, like right now, now outside rain is happening, but that is not accompanied by thunder. You should go out, enjoy this rain. But that beginning part, if you were there uh, last to last night, lot of thunder and like you really get what lot of trees were struck. That is something that is the cloud to ground lightning in the beginning of the rain event. Now, no lightning or rather not warning level lightning is not there. I hope I could clear it to an extent to with you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So uh, stratiform rain, not much lightning. You should enjoy that event. But that convective rain, uh, that that boundary region, the beginning part of the rain, is what you need to be worried about. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. There is a uh, one more interesting question, ma'am, uh, from uh, Sumit Kumar. The question is th that, ma'am. Uh, is there any impact of the uh, like uh, current counts, like last five, six years of the lightning thunder due to this ongoing El Nino effects? Ma'am, is there any uh, influence of that El Nino effects on our lightning and thunderstorm? Oh, yes. Very, again, a very good question. Mr. Sumit, is it? Yes, ma'am. Uh, very good question. Uh, uh, let me put it this way. Uh, El Nino, La Nina. These are uh, for the rest of our friends also this is our uh, uh, this is a you can say this is a global uh, oscillation that is happening el nino southern oscillation index we define by so uh, what happens in el nino years is uh, if of course there is another phenomenon in this indian ocean dipole that is also important uh, but in el nino conditions basically the 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 net effect during monsoon period is that you don't have much uh, moisture flow inland into the uh, into the uh, Indian mainland because of which you don't get so much of rain. So there has not been any concerted study yet regarding the actual effect on lightning, El Nino events on lightning. But if you in extrapolate from what happens in respect of thunderstorms, uh, in respect of rainfall, with respect to El Nino events, El Nino, El Nino seasons, rather I should say, are defined by more break spells, less rain over the Indian region. So if that is the condition, then whenever there is, El Nino is not that there is no rain throughout the season, there is more break, less active. So whenever there is a, that active to break transition, as many times as you get it, you the more frequent will be the observations of lightning. So if in a season you get more active to break to active conditions, this phase transitions happen, uh, then or 
if there are long breaks followed by active monsoon conditions, uh, which happen during El Nino year, so you will get a lot more lightning flashes over the region through which the monsoon clouds are progressing. Uh, so in those times, you might get much more lightning flashes uh, over your Bengal and uh, uh, Orisha and uh, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand and Bihar region. Uh, whereas if it is a La Nina year, I would, this is again, I'm only uh, extrapolating on the basis of rainfall. You get a lot more rainfall even. So uh, active conditions prevail most of the time. So you don't get, so the rainfall is a lot more stratiform over the Indian region. You get less lightning flashes, I would say. More rain, less lightning. Less rain, more all along the foothills, you should get more lightning flashes. Yes. But this is general. Uh, this year is a La Nina year, or rather this is enso neutral year. We are still getting a lot more lightning because of these two tropical cyclones, this Tote and Yas, they totally disturbed the atmosphere and you got a long break. So after that long break, the active conditions that happened were delayed. So during that period, you got a lot of lightning flashes, even during a uh, in so neutral year. So really it's a very complex question and it is only statistically to be seen whether uh, in, how good the correlation is. Do you follow that? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely, ma'am. Uh, so ma'am, there is one more very interesting question. Actually, ma'am, it's a uh, collaboration of two questions. I am joining two questions. So one question is raised by Rahul. The question is, ma'am, are we creating, uh, like uh, we have, uh, we usually heard uh, here in news that now there are some people uh, creating artificial clouds also. So ma'am, is it possible to neutralize the thunder cloud? This is the first part, ma'am. And the third, second part is, ma'am, is there any technology that is currently anywhere in the world that is somehow capturing this uh, power that is there in thunderstorm and utilizing it in some ways? uh you're talking of benjamin franklin i believe i'll answer <laughs> the second one first yes, yes it is a good question i actually i am not aware if somebody is, is capturing the lightning energy i am not aware of that i need to find that out if if i find out i will definitely mail to uh, you mr Thapa, and you can share it with the person who has asked this question uh, coming to the other question, uh, cloud modification, cloud generation or weather modification, it's a very interesting subject. Uh, uh, rather, we should have a talk on that itself. What is cloud modification and why it succeeds or why it fails? Uh, for the last 50 years, uh, China, Russia have been uh, primarily trying to do a lot more weather modification studies, uh, basically throwing a lot of uh, you know, uh, cloud condensation nuclei, hydrophilic nuclei into the regions where there is a lot of moisture and causing clouds to form and rain to happen. Uh, but uh, even in India, uh, the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology is, has a good project to do this. But uh, what is really happening is it's a mixed result. Uh, sometimes you're getting very good, uh, very good results in terms of uh, the, light, the rainfall, net amount of rainfall has happened and uh, that is, uh, that is, that means cloud, your, your results have been uh, successful, but more often than not, this weather modification is still a very developing technology. We are hearing China has done a more successful thing over uh, the dry, uh, dry regions to the northeast of India, but uh, I'm not sure how successful these results are. Once the results come in a public domain, uh, one can analyze and really see whether these are uh, happening or not. See, the main thing is not is whether it does not follow country boundaries. Now, the the pollution due to pollution or the cloud condensation nuclei produced over the Doab region can flow with the westerlies into uh, South China. Then the, the weakening of the Tibetan high can affect Indian monsoon. So weather does not follow country boundaries. And uh, I really don't know how successful this kind of 
study is. There is it's a complicated field because thunderstorms just don't happen that the cloud and uh, I mean moisture, temperature and top, there's a cloud and rain happening. It doesn't happen like that. A lot of other things also have to be in place. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, ma'am, the next question is from uh, Sujata ji. The question is, ma'am, uh, uh, she wants to know, sir, ma'am, uh, how any school or NGO or the vol like voluntary organizations, they can suppose, ma'am, they want to install a rain gauge in their village in Maharashtra. So, uh, so, ma'am, what they can do so that they can install that and they can suppose, ma'am, get uh, simple their understanding of how the rainfall patterns, uh, like the rain, how what is the rainfall pattern and other thing. And from is there any provision for them to get trainings um, for the same from any uh, particular, like from IMD or from anywhere, ma'am? What do you no. suggest them? Firstly, just I, I would, what was the first part? What equipment do they want to install? Ma'am, they want to install, uh, install such as rain gauge or anything uh, related rain to rain gauge. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sujata ji, uh, first of all, it's a thank you. If you want to install a rain gauge, uh, please mail to uh, send a send a. Uh, you can just put the name on the mail. Director General of India Meteorological Department. Just send a mail or a letter from your school to India Meteorological Department saying that we wish to install a rain gauge. If you send a mail, if it is possible, the department will help you in installing a rain gauge and you can report those observations to uh, us. That is a good good source of observation. Second thing is, if you see the map that I am showing here, the crowdsourcing app, uh, you don't have to install anything on your mobile. You just have to go to this site and just uh, press it, and it's a simple thing. You have to report. Thunderstorm is happening in your location. What are the damages happening? Anything else you want to say. If you want to give your location, fine. If you don't want to give your location, at least you will have to give your district because otherwise we cannot use that information in any way. So once that information comes, even that is a very good source of information for us. Regarding training, uh, I would say something that uh, two ways of training happen. One thing is you please talk to your state disaster management authority. Your state, again, if your state disaster management authority is not replying, please mail to us. We will also talk on behalf of you that, uh, if, uh, that if they're interested, if you're interested, you should be involved in this uh, thing. And uh, any NGOs that are interested, please again contact Director General of Meteorology, India Meteorological Department, and also the state disaster management authority, National Disaster Management Authority, send mail. I'm telling you frankly, your mails will be acted upon. This much I'm assuring you. You send a mail regarding your requirement, it will be acted upon. And it's a good endeavor, and I hope at schools, this, these, uh, this kind of, I, I would request uh, Mr. Uh, Thapa to share this presentation with the people. As many people see it, use it, it is beneficial for us. 3,000 people dying in a country like India is a huge number. And not just the deaths, the damages, if you see the state disaster relief, uh, and the state disaster management authorities report, the damages are also huge. We are not taking into account animal damages. So if some action, if this results in some action, we will be grateful. If people take action on the basis of this presentation or any other talks, Please write to Director General Meteorology. If not, if I am able to, I will. Otherwise, others at the state level will talk to you. Go to your school, talk to you about uh, lightning and action to be taken. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Right, you said, ma'am. And after all, ma'am, like you said, three thousand number is a big number. After, yes. like, even when IMD is, there is prediction already there. One hour prediction. After that, if we are having such a high, huge number, it's Definitely, there is something wrong with dissemination that we are not able, uh, like, able to penetrate in the community. Yes. So, definitely, ma'am, that is very, very important. So, ma'am, one more question, uh, very much similar to this. 
uh, is uh, from uh, uh, yes from uh, Dipesh Karmakar. The question actually um, he being a teacher, ma'am. Now, uh, so he wants to know. I think that uh, from where to get the information. Suppose, ma'am, uh, documentation or information on lightning thunderstorm, so that they can uh, put that in their library or they can educate their student and also uh, like forward those document to other uh, like to their other uh, alumni students also so how where can they go for the sources okay uh, what again i'm saying mr karmakar uh, this uh, please uh, uh, take this presentation why i'm saying is because this is not the complete thing uh, and uh, like you rightly said you need actual information where do you get this from so i have put links on every page okay so this these links please go to these links to get the information about the relevant slide this is just the tip of the iceberg it's good that you're interested and really your students should be involved uh, should be informed of this use this presentation to uh, you don't have to go through the whole thing but whichever slide is important to you Please go into that slide and there is a reference at the bottom. Please go to that reference and uh, this will give you an idea about uh, each aspect of uh, lighting that I have talked about. That is the best I can do because this is not, there is no single source uh, for all this information. You should go to the NDMS site uh, also this uh, because they have a lot of information. I think I've shown you. This ndma.gov.in, uh, you please go there. There is a lot of information about lightning and uh, how to take action, warnings, who is responsible for what. You know, this is policy related information and uh, what to do, what not to do. All that action is given in this site. Please go there. And as I said, you talk, you see the links at the bottom of each paper each of these uh, slides these are research papers much of it is not my own i mean um, much of it is uh, internationally accepted results i'm showing you it is not just my results that i'm showing you so that will help you to get an idea about uh, how to take action is it okay yes sir. Uh, and even uh, our IMD website is also a, like yes, a, our IMD website. People. Yes, please. I forgot about it. Yes, awesome. <laughs> IMD yes, sir. Please go to that. And uh, yeah, I have. I think I've mentioned this IMD website uh, somewhere here. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Yes, ma IMD right. gov .in. Please go yes. to this site. This gives you a lot of information about everything of severe weather, lightning, flash flood, heat wave. We have all the information. Please go to it. Give us feedback yes. how we can improve. It is your money which is paying our salaries. So we are supposed to act upon it. So ma'am, I will just uh, finish up with last question, ma'am. Yes. So ma'am, the uh, question is from Sumit Kumar. Yes. So is there any data or statistics available to say that lightning or thunderstorm phenomena, like it impact the dry regions also, most unlikely the coastal areas, but the dry region. Yes, see, the dry regions are affected like they are being affected now. Again, I'm saying uh, when you see the entire country as a whole, monsoon onset is the best time to see lightning, cloud to ground lightning. Rajasthan does not get so many lightning instances. You will note that it happened, the, these recent instances that happened over Rajasthan, it happened only during monsoon onset dry land you know this period when uh, like when we are saying than, like, than, uh, monsoon has just arrived or it is likely to arrive this is the period when dry regions get suddenly a lot of moisture and that moisture is what creates that kind of cloud to brown lightning so this is the time when you need to be aware uh, take precautions Throughout the year, you don't need to be aware, no, don't need to be so careful about all weather. That means whenever you see a cloud in the sky, you need not go at home, go inside. But during this period, when monsoon has just arrived or it is likely to arrive, and there is a you know a dry region and lot of moisture coming in, that is the only time you get lot of lightning. 
On the other hand, coastal regions, because the kind of weather we have on the coast, you know, there is a dry line kind of a, uh, rather there is a trough uh, along the coast. It moves slightly inland. A lot of moisture will penetrate all along the east coast inland. And you get a lot of lightning, cloud to ground lightning over coastal Odisha, coastal Andhra, coastal Tamil Nadu. So that is the region where you get throughout the year thunderstorms with cloud to ground lightning. But dry regions, monsoon onset, or break to active transition, long break period followed by sudden active conditions happening. Active means a lot within the monsoon, a big dry spell followed by a sudden wet spell. Even that time, a lot of deep clouds and cloud to ground lightning will be there. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So uh, thank you very much, ma'am, for your patience. And uh, and responding to so many questions, ma'am, with uh, such an ease, ma'am, and and clearing the doubts of all the participants, ma'am. Thank you very very much, ma'am, for joining us. And thank uh, you. I I will definitely share this presentation with all the participants. They are already asking me and uh, for the PPTs. So after this presentation, um, I uh, I assure all the participants also that I will be sharing the presentation. Sure, so I will send you. it to you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very very much, ma'am, for joining us. Thank you. In fact, you can keep the link on your website. If anybody wants to download, they can simply download from there. And as Definitely many people not. see it, it's better for us. Because Definitely. if we are producing a forecast and that is not doing anything, it's no good. Thank Definitely, you. Definitely, ma'am. Definitely. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So, participant, with that being said, uh, we have come to the end of the technical session. Now, uh, moving on to the valedictory session, I will ask Professor Surya Prakash, who is the head of GMR division and also the chair of this uh, webinar series, to uh, say a few words in the concluding uh, sessions. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rajiv. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, my heartfelt thanks to uh, Ms. Soma Sen Roy who has uh, you know, shared her rich experience, knowledge and information about lightning and thunderstorms. And it is the second time that uh, she has been with us as a host uh, guest speaker. And, uh, and IMD has collaborated uh, with us in this particular area of early warning and alert and communication on lightning and thunderstorms. Uh, the information she has provided, as she said, is being disseminated through various means. And they are trying to actually connect the last mile. However, there are still gaps which need to be filled up or bridged. And uh, organizations like NIDM and other training organizations or the other field organizations, they can help bridge those gaps. Uh, for information to Ms. Soma Sen Roy, that NIDM actually uh, hosting this YouTube link. This uh, program is uh, parallelly being uh, broadcasted on the YouTube. And also, this uh, YouTube link will remain alive. And an edited version of this uh, program will also go live on the YouTube later on. So, this information will remain there. And uh, the participants as well as others who are not able to attend now can also access this information later on. Uh, at NIDM, we have been trying uh, to have a series of programs on various uh, types of hazards with respect to early warning and communication. And these are special on early warning and communication where our junior consultant, Mr. Dr. Rajiv Thapa, and uh, Mr. Ajit Botham are joining hands together to conduct such programs. We have been graced with the experts by uh, provided by India Meteorological Department. So we are grateful to DGIMD Dr. Mirtunjaya Mahapatraji also for uh, providing us these resource persons and sparing their valuable time, uh, particularly during this monsoon period when such events are more frequent and widespread than in other times. And we are trying to cover almost all the geographical areas of the country where these hazards strike and have been affecting the human lives, livestock, 
properties and infrastructure particularly the electronic and electronics uh, items have been very much affected the recent uh, example of the uh, lightning in rajasthan which had killed around 70 people is one of the major lessons to be learned that uh, people in amir fort uh, uh, the lightning arrests were not uh, good enough to arrest the impact of the lightning so it also gives us an idea that it is very important where public places are there and crowds are likely to visit and those places and are potential uh, hazards from lightning should also have protections against lightning for example lightning arrests or other means and second protection and mitigation For example, many of the casualties which have been reported, lightning, they have people who are uh, standing under the tree, or who are go going for harvesting of the uh, no rabi crop, uh, standing within the waters uh, to. Uh, yeah. So the, those they are more affected, and sometimes the people are caught by that who are standing close to electrical systems, electrical poles, or something like that, or all the information. Uh, such information can help in uh, reducing the risks. People uh, learn about it. So our efforts through such program is to make people aware, informed, and prepared against the risks from thunderstorms and lightning, and uh, adequate protective measures, mitigative measures must be taken by the concerned departments and also by the individual citizens to learn about do's and don'ts in lightning and thunderstorm situations. So, uh, with these words, I think uh, this is uh, the beginning of uh, our journey towards disaster reduction and resilience, particularly against uh, lightning and uh, thunderstorms, because this is a very uh, new area where a uh, lot of work still needs to be done. And IMD, as said, is collaborating with several organizations, not only within the nation, but across the countries. And World Meteorological Organization WMO is also working on this, and NIDM is also working with other partners as well in these directions for uh, spreading this information and knowledge related to disaster risk reduction and resilience. With a follow-up of our Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction, Prime Minister's 10-point agenda for disaster risk reduction, climate. Uh, agreement for climate change adaptation and also the sustainable development. So, whatever uh, actions are required to be taken, and the DMA and National Disaster Management Authority has also prepared guidelines and they need also to be considered uh, for proper impl effective implementation, as told by uh, Dr. Roy, that uh, they are also sharing this information at NDMA website as well. And now we are actually having different means. We are having web based early warnings. We are having mobile apps for early warnings, for example, Damani and Mossam or uh, other apps being uh, uh, issued by uh, IMD, as well as some of the state disaster management authorities, for example, TN Smart by Tamil Nadu State Government, State Disaster Management Authority, which are providing this forecast timely. And uh, also, now uh, our disaster management authority that their own state emergency operation center are utilizing the universal communication bus systems to spread this through all possible means of communications. So that everyone who is having a mobile or a connection network can get this information timely and save his 
or her life as well as save others so first one has to learn to save himself or herself and then save others so i am very thankful hopefully this information will help in saving lives in one or other places uh, and uh, this information knowledge as we say is power power to save lives and a timely information is highly valuable and we consider golden hours and early warning and it is said that a stitch in time saves nine and early warning is like that it's a advanced information that is being given with a time lag so that adequate action timely action can be taken to prevent okay. the adverse consequences so uh, i wish all the best to all our delegates participants expert and also our uh, host and uh, our uh, coordinator of this program and i thank uh, our executive director major general manoj kumar bindal ji for providing is this, this opportunity to host this program and also uh, providing us all encouragement and motivation for conduct of all such i'm also thankful to djimd uh, dr mitunje mahapatra and dr soma sen roy for sharing her experiences and we, i hope uh, in future also we'll have this uh, opportunity to share more information and the state of art technology uh, with the latest updates so with these words i think i have to thank everyone who has also attended this program because they are the advocates of this program ambassadors of our program who will take this further knowledge downwards to all other people so this should, you should not contain this knowledge and information within yourself spread it out so that everybody gets benefited as in pandemics we have said i am safe if all others are safe if all others are safe i am also safe so we have to work in both directions for our own safety and i also say to all others around us so with these words uh, thank you everyone for giving me this opportunity uh, to address in the valedictory program in the concluding session and i wish all the best to everyone kisi shayar ne kaha hai ki manzilein unhi ko milti hain jo safar ikhtiyar karte hain aise musafir to yaro raste bhi intezar karte hain you have started your journey towards disaster reduction and resilience continue like vivekanand ji has said stop not till the goal is achieved so our goals are zero casualty and let's try to build this zero casualty and also minimize the damage and losses to economy and infrastructure and also the number of population affected these are our targets and seven target one some of the targets under the seven targets of the sandai framework we are trying to follow no doubt at the local level we have to build our strategies also as like the national level as well as collaboration and strengthening the cooperations and coordination at all levels with uh, across disciplines across sectors and across uh, uh, hazards and transboundary issues are also sometimes so we must look into all those aspects and dimension factors for this sources and rest them well so that we remain in safe and sustain uh, future for all of us thank you very much uh, thank you raju dr raju back to you thank you thank you very much sir for your uh, elaborative uh, valedictory address sir and highlighting all the very crucial points also sir. so thank you very very much sir for joining us uh, despite uh, your other busy schedule sir thank you very much so in the end um, uh, i would like to take this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks and uh, it's an honor to propose the vote of thanks on this virtual gathering for the webinar on thunderstorm and lightning on behalf of nidm and imd i'm very heartily great I, i i express my very heartly gratitude to the honorable and respected dignitaries uh, our uh, Uh, major general manoj kumar bindal ed nidm and dr mitunjay mahapatra ji dg uh, dgm imd
for their support and coordination in organizing this webinar series. And uh, I must remark a very uh, proficient sense of gratefulness to distinguished speaker, Dr. Uh, Dr. Soma Sen Royji, scientist at IMD, for sharing um, her graceful words and uh, like vast scientific experience with us in today's webinar topic. And I also I'm very uh, thankful to our professor, uh, Surya Prakash, who is the head GMR division and also the chair of this uh, pro webinar series uh, for giving us an opportunity uh, to uh, excel in our all our work and uh, and also giving us uh, leading supervision and inspiring at each, each point of our endeavors. And my thanks also goes to all other people who has been given their precious time in organizing this uh, program, particularly my colleague, Dr. Harjit Kaur, Sri Anil Kathredji, Mr. Balaji, Sovit Gaurav, uh, Dipali Ma'am, Ajit, and also Hari, who has been greatly helping in us in organizing this webinar. And also, I am thankful to all the participants, like Suja said, without their participation, uh, this whole thing will not come up as it has come up. So without their participation, so I am very thankful to all the participants, more than 500 people, those who have joined us in Cisco WebEx, and also other people who are watching us live on the YouTube. All uh, I express my hearty gratitude to all of you. So to end my uh, this webinar, I would like to say that the third webinar of this webinar series that is um, the cloud burst and flood that is to be shared that is scheduled on 27th of this month so i will request all of us to kindly join us in the webinar and listen from the experts on this field uh, okay so please join us again on the same day same uh, same day that is tuesday 27th same time so with these words please stay safe stay healthy thank you for joining us thank you everyone thank you thank you ma'am thank you